Hi, my name's Dan, and today we're going to go over the latest changes for the Bookstack December 2025 release. Now, there are some upgrade notices for this release when it comes to database requirements, permission and access controls, and default user preferences when it comes to notifications. So please ensure that you read these sections in the linked blog post below. So the main feature of this release relates to comments. So here I've got a page in Bookstack, and if I go down to add a comment, Within the comment editor, I can now use at to reference another user in the system. So if I search for someone that I want to mention, in this case, I'll search Chuck. And then we've got Paul and Barry Chuck will both pop up because they match the search. And then I can either click or navigate by a keyboard to then select one of those users to directly at mention them. And then when I save my comment, since I mentioned that user, if I look at the email sent by this instance, they would have received this email notification saying that they were mentioned in a comment with the page information and the comment information with a button to jump directly to that comment. And then you are able to edit a comment that has a mention within it and you can change who you're mentioning as well. So let's mention Barry instead and we can hit save. And now this will go and notify Barry. And behind the scenes, Bookstack is tracking who's been mentioned per comment so that it's able to decipher if someone was mentioned twice across edits or within the same comment. For example, if we then change that back to mention Paul Chuckle and hit save, it wouldn't notify him because he has previously been notified. There's a bit of deduplication going on just to make sure users don't get spammed so much if someone's editing a comment and changing who's mentioned within it. And these mention notifications are part of our notification system that we've had for a little while now. So to receive these kind of notifications, a user will need to have this system permission on one of their roles, receive and manage notifications. And within their own user notification, preferences they will need to have this notify when I mentioned in a comment preference selected although unlike other ones this is enabled by default as long as a user has the ability to receive notifications and this was done just so they're actually useful rather than everyone having to explicitly opt in to mentions is opt out for example if they're receiving too many next up is a change to how we handle URLs within the system so for many items in the core hierarchy, like shelves, books, chapters, and pages, that when you change the name of the item, the name in the URL will also update. So this bit here, which says admin planning, would change if we change the name of this book. And in modern versions of books that links to that within the system, so from other pages and other books and things, would automatically update to account for those changes. And then specifically for page URLs, we had a system where we'd look to the revision system. So if someone went to an old URL that wasn't valid for a current page, we'd look up to the page revision system to see if there was a matching URL there and then redirect them to the new version of that URL. But this would still lead to broken links and missing pages in a few scenarios such as if you were sharing links externally, particularly those for books, chapters and shelves. So in this release we've improved on this by adding a purpose-built tracking system for URL changes within the system. So to show this, what I'll do in our book here, I'll open up a chapter in a new tab. So this has the admin planning part of the parent book name in here, and then the chapter name is within here. So then if we go back to the book and change the name of this to admin book and hit save, we can see now this is book slash admin book. We go back to the other tab that's using the old URL, refresh this, and we get redirected to the new admin book URL and then our chapter within that. So now overall we cover a much wider area of what might have led to broken URLs in the past. Next we're going to be looking at some new settings. The previously added sorting category is now changed to lists and sorting and if we go on there we've got this new option here per page display limits and this allows you to configure how many shelves and books and search results are shown on their respective pages. And the text here advises using even multiples of three so 18, 24, 30 because generally that works for rows of three, two or one items. But you don't have to stick to that for example you could uh, you know show one shelf per page if you really want it to be annoying let's go three books and four search results and then if we navigate to those pages we've got multiple pages but only one shown on this first page books is three items and we've got five pages of them and then when we search of course we've only got four results because that's what we've selected and generally when choosing how many you want to display you might consider that showing fewer items will be performant for each page that gets loaded but then showing more may be more convenient to users because they don't have to scroll through as many pages to find what they might need to find so now we're going to look at an improvement in how copying content works so we've been able to copy books and chapters for quite a while and pages long before that 
And this would be quite useful in created sets of like template books or template chapters that you can then copy and then use as a basis to start from. But one annoying limitation is that the links would remain as is. And in particular, the sort of self-contained links. So for example, we've got a book here and in the description of this book, we've got a link that goes to a page within this book. So it's this page here. So if we follow that, we get to that page and this has got another link to a chapter within the same book. But if we were to copy this book, all those links would refer to the old content and not to the new copied book. But as of this release, we now handle those links. So if we copy this book and we'll call it accounts department two. So that now we're in our copied book and if we click on that link now, you can see this refers to the same copied page, but that within our accounts department two book, our new copied book, and the same with this link to our chapter. So when you copy that book, Stack will look at all the internal references, and if they're within the same copy operation, it will then automatically update that content to keep those links within the context of what is being copied. Now for something for those more developer focused, the new WYSIWYG editor that I've been introducing over the past year and beyond now has an initial version of a JavaScript based API, which can allow for extension and customization. And this is currently documented as a markdown document in the dev docs directory of the main repository. And it's quite thin to begin with. It's really here to make sure that the fundamentals are correct to start with, but it does allow a few very common abilities such as being able to create a button, add a button to the main toolbar and being able to insert content or HTML into the editor. And then from here, I'd like to expand it out and mature it based off of feedback. So I've got this thread here on GitHub. So if there's any functionality that you need that isn't already in this initial release, then please let me know because I'm happy to work with others to see where we need to grow it. I'd much rather do that than try and guess what people need from such an API. And just as an example of this, I'll add a customization to my custom HTML head content setting within Bookstack. And this is using our JavaScript public event system to listen when the new WYSIWYG editor is initialized. It gains the API from the data of that event. Then here we're creating a button with a specific label and an action that inserts HTML. And then we're adding that to the toolbar. So if I hit save, and then I'll go to a page and edit it. We can see that has added a button up here that says greet. So when we click on that, it's inserting a bold hello. And while we're in the subject of the new WYSIWYG editor, this has once again received more improvements. Just some little things like if you have text highlighted when you hit Control Shift K to search for an item to link to, that will now automatically be entered within here as the default search term. So then I've searched finance, so I can just click on that. And then with modals, for example, if I edit this link, it will now properly focus on the modal instead of focus remaining on the content. And just some little things like this. But of course, this will continue to evolve in a future releases. And now for the Bookstack system CLI, which is a command line interface that's been included with Bookstack for a while. And this allows you to do a lot of admin level operations such as updating your instance, backing it up, restoring, things like that. And this has received a few improvements just to bring it in line with some recent changes. So for example, the init command, which allows you to create the files for a new Bookstack instance. So this, along with the update command, will now use our new more efficient method of downloading PHP dependencies from our files.bookstackapp.com site rather than using Composer, which is a lot more efficient and doesn't rely on other sources like GitHub or Codeberg. And the init command that I just used will now use our source.bookstackapp.com code mirror instead of using GitHub to download the original Bookstack sources. Again, just to keep things first party and not relying on external sources. And now on to a rather minor change to how light and dark modes are handled in Bookstack. So behind the scenes, Bookstack would add to the page the correct variables for either light or dark mode, but only one at a time, depending on what you've got selected. And this is fine for Bookstack's own use because it jumps between them with a page refresh, essentially. But this could make it hard for any customizations to do dynamic things. So as of this release, things are handled a little bit differently. So all the variables are there, ready to be used for either light or dark mode. And then the only thing that controls this is a class on the top level HTML element. So what this means in practice is that you can have JavaScript customizations, such as this simple little one here, and this can allow you to toggle off the dark or light theme dynamically without browser refreshes. So for example, that customization just toggles the theme when I double click the header bar. So I can do that just to quickly switch. For example, you just needed a preview of how things looked. But of course you can do a whole range of other things like pick up the user's 
browser's theme preference via JavaScript and then update the page based upon that. And of course, our translations have been updated for this release. Not as many as we'd usually see before because I think this has been a quicker release cycle with fewer earlier changes to the text used in Bookstack. But still a massive thanks to all the great technicians of Translate and Text listed here that allow Bookstack to be usable by those all over the world. So a big thank you to everyone here. So in terms of next steps for Bookstack, over the next week or so I'm gonna be focused on writing up a Bookstack in 2025 blog post like we've done as I'm showing here for previous years. So I'll be going over the current project funding. We'll have a look back on the features that we've introduced in the last year, talk about our audience, the reach, and kind of other meta level organization elements. One of which will be about our migration to Codeberg instead of GitHub, which is something that I plan to do within the initial weeks of 2026. And we've already migrated most of our repositories over to Codeberg, but it's just the main project code repository now that we need to move across and manage in Codeberg instead. The existing GitHub repo will still exist since a lot of instances reference that and will update from that. But Codeberg will be the main place when it comes to managing the project on a daily basis. So managing issues and pull requests and things like that. But I will be talking more about that in the 2025 blog post. In terms of the project code itself, I will be, of course, watching out for input and feedback upon the new development API introduced in this release for the new WYSIWYG editor, just to get iterating on that, to get it more tested, because all of this helps to move the new editor forward to become the new default, hopefully sometime in 2026. But other than that, I'm not exactly sure what direction I'll go in for this next release cycle, whether I'll take something very large and chunky to work on, or whether I'll instead pick out a bunch of small improvements and elements that I can get into. Kind of expect to gain some perspective upon this after looking back over the last year and thinking about where the project might be best to go while writing up that 2025 blog post. But that's everything that I've got for this release video. So I hope there's something in here which will impact you positively. I was aiming for this release to to be a little Christmas present composed of more impactful user-facing features because a lot of our previous releases were more focused on back-end changes that weren't so visible. But yeah, hopefully there's something to enjoy here. But with that said, I wish you a smooth upgrade and I hope you have a wonderful day in addition to a wonderful Christmas holiday. Thank you very much for watching.